A powerful 7.1 magnitude earthquake has hit Southern California, sending terrified residents out onto the streets. That quake caused some damage in Ridgecrest. Homes shifted, foundations cracked. There were multiple fires there. Some injuries were reported, but thankfully no deaths. So there's a chance that the, the worst may not be over. And consider this, we've been on the air for, for New Day for what, 14 and a half minutes now. And in those 14 and a half minutes, there have been 11 aftershocks. The strongest uh, 3.5 magnitude. Experts say that there is a chance that a stronger earthquake, stronger than 7.1, could hit Southern California in the next few days. We have never seen a sequence like this suddenly stop, right? So uh, the aftershocks will continue. It's following a pretty traditional pattern, uh, but on the high side. So if you, you know, how many aftershocks will you get to a seven? Some of them have just a small number. Some of them have a lot. We're on the upper 50 percentile. Um, and this is definitely a robust sequence, but it's far from uh, unprecedented. It's, uh, it's just on the high side of average. And Lucy, can you discuss the, the aftershocks again, the, the, the size of them and how many you've had? Okay, so far we've recorded uh, two that are above magnitude five, 16 above magnitude four, and um, uh, 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 over 50 that are above magnitude three. And the chances of another seven plus in your mind? Uh, there's an estimate, a very preliminary estimate right now of about 10% about a one in 10 chance that we could have another seven within the sequence. Uh, that's uh, calculated for the next week. And what about the greater? six and the five, please? What about the six and five? Or I, I, okay, so the, the chance of something bigger than six is actually a bit over 50%, about a, about a you know, one in two, a little better than one in 50-50 chance. And the, the chance for fives is, is approaching certainty. It's. Uh, it would be extremely unusual if we didn't have another five. So this is included in like three days, right? Three days. That, this is a, these estimates are all for a week. A week. All right. So the most likely time is right now. Okay. The other thing to remember, the way they die off with time, and we were seeing it after the six, and it seems to be, you know, we seem to be getting into the die off period here on the seven. Whatever number you have in the first 24 hours, the next 24 hours will have about half that many. And the next 24 hours will have about a third that many, et cetera. So the 10th day will have one tenth as many as we have on the first day. The, and what that means is it will go down pretty quickly, and then we'll have a really long tail where it will continue for, to have the risk for quite a while. The last time we've had earthquakes of this size, we were seeing significant aftershocks for more than a year. All right, so that, there was some more about the aftershocks. We're going to bring in meteorologist Ivan Cabrera, and we want to update you. We've now had 13 aftershocks since New Day started 17 minutes ago. So that's what's going on out in California. Help us understand, Ivan, the magnitude of this quake and then what people can expect both today and in the coming days. Right, yeah, I want to break that down for you. In fact, uh, we've got just a few more, and so we're getting one about every few minutes here, and that's just going to continue. But as Lucy mentioned there, they are going to be below 7.1, assuming, and this is big, assuming that the 7.1 is the main quake, because we had a less than 10% chance of a greater than 6.4 happening, and here it is, right, at 7.1. By the way, uh, this is a huge deal. This is the way they're categorized. The 6.4 was a strong earthquake. Uh, this was a major earthquake, anything above seven. And those don't happen that often, not just in California, but across the world. Uh, they are in the single digits as far as how many we get. And this is an exponential energy release. So when we're talking about 6.4 and a 7.1, you're thinking, well, it's only you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. No, it's 11 times stronger. So the energy release, the ferocity of the uh, shaking is 11 times stronger when you go from a 6.4 to a 7.1. A 7.1, what does that mean as far as energy? How about 45 Hiroshima atomic bombs? That's what we're talking about as far as energy. 1.3 billion sticks of dynamite. And if you were to power your home with the energy released from that quake, you would have 29,660 years of power. So a obviously significant event here. This is the shake map. This is the areas that felt the shaking from Fresno to LA. And as you see with the cities, they get more intense. By the way, the 
6.4 did not have severe shaking. Ridgecrest did feel severe shaking with this 7.1. And this is the average, as Lucy was mentioning. This is just average. When you get a 7.1, the chances of getting a 6 or higher are about 1. So we're going to watch this closely, but that's just an average here. That can change rather quickly. So 1 in 10 chance. I think that's pretty significant to get something above a 7.0. We're hoping the 7.0 was the max, but We'll keep watching it for you here, but what folks need to understand is that we are going to continue with the earth shaking because once you get that rupture, it's not quite done. And when it's not quite done, we're talking about those aftershocks that could continue for weeks and months, though they decay in frequency and intensity, guys.